Thank uh, you very so much. Uh, our next speaker is Michael Gray, a multi-talented individual, a screenwriter who some people may know from the China Syndrome, but also the author of a very interesting book, A Drug Crazy, about how the United States got into this drug war in the first place. Michael? me to talk about uh, Hamilton Wright, who is one of the arch villain of the, uh, uh, the man who kicked this whole thing off. Uh, it began, uh, let's see, where were I? I wrote this book, but I haven't read it lately. Um, uh, it was, uh, let's see, uh, May the 1st of 1908. Hamilton Wright was walking across DuPont Circle when Cal O'Loughlin, uh, Chicago Tribune, Washington reporter, caught up with him. And Wright was well known to the press because he was famous for discovering, he, he was a research uh, ph physician who, uh, from McGill University, and very brilliant guy, graduated at the top of his class, and, and he was famous for uh, uh, his discovery that beriberi is an infectious disease. It isn't, it's a vitamin deficiency, but by the time his mistake was uncovered, he was already famous, and, and uh, he, he had also had the good fortune to marry the daughter of uh, Senator Washburn, or an industrialist named Washburn, who uh, was a multi, multi-millionaire and uh, very powerful politically. So uh, uh, Wright knew a lot of people in Washington, he hadn't done anything there yet, but uh, uh, Cal Laughlin, told him about the Opium Commission of 1909 that was coming up in Shanghai. He heard nothing about it. He knew nothing about opium, and he certainly didn't know what the commission was for, but as he said later, I could see this would be a great deal of work and at a high level. So he volunteered, and, and of course, because of his political con fam family connections, he got the appointment, one of three people, to the first uh, Chinese Opium Commission Conference in Shanghai in 1909. And this was uh, actually a means, it wasn't, uh, we weren't interested in opium, we were interested in the Chinese markets. And uh, 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 William Taft called it the, the greatest untapped market on the, in the world, and the British had screwed up because the Chinese were I mean, they felt misused, mishandled. Every time anybody showed up in China for a conference, they would walk away with a piece of Chinese real estate. The British got Macau and Hong Kong and all that stuff. So the Chinese were very leery about this, but the, the Americans figured this is an excellent opportunity because the Chinese were responsible for the opium addiction. I mean, the, the, the British were responsible for the opium addiction in China. Uh, they, in, in the 1800s, they had a huge uh, outflow of silver into China because they were buying silk and tea and the Chinese weren't buying anything. So they were keeping the silver and the, there was a, a huge imbalance in trade and, and the British were getting very nervous about this, understandably, so they, uh, 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 they decided that they would have to do something about this and they instituted a, a trade in opium from India where the British East India Company got it for nothing and moved it to China, where they created a huge sea of addiction and a tremendous problem and great profits, which returned the uh, silver to where its rightful owners in, in, in London. Uh, so <coughs> Taft saw this as an opportunity to get rid of the British uh, and, uh, and uh, outmaneuver them in the Chinese market for shoes and everything else. So we volunteered to, to take this on and, and create this Opium Commission. Wright went over there and he had done some research. He was a research guy. And he, not knowing anything about opium, sent out letters to the people who would know about it. Prison wardens, police chiefs, you know, all the law enforcement professionals, no doctors. And um, because he was the doctor. And uh, so he managed to convince himself that not only was opium a global scourge, it was worse in the United States than China. That we had opium addictions sweeping the country. None of that was true, but uh, Wright 
uh, by this time, he, he had become an evangelical missionary on uh, eliminating narcotics addiction in the world. So what he did was, this first conference at The Hague, he managed to get them to agree to agree to something in the future. And then he came back to the states and he would talk to the people here in Congress saying, we just signed an agreement with uh, uh, the international community, we've got to institute anti-narcotics laws. And uh, we, uh, uh, so, so he managed to crank this up by going back and forth between these foreign conferences, one at The Hague, and then he'd come back and tell the Congress, we, uh, and without running it by any people in the United States, he obligated us to stamp out opium addiction in the United States, and that led to the Harrison Anti-Narcotics Act. And the rest of it flows from there. Total fraud from start to finish had no reason for this to be, it, it was just this one evangelical nut who outmaneuvered everybody. The State Department, the, 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 the Home Office, by telling lies. And the other, the other problem was, of course, at this time, in order to get this law in effect, you had to have a national police force. And that's, as, as Wright said, I'm trying my best, but the goddamn Constitution keeps getting in the way. So the Supreme Court had, just, had figured out a way around that, uh, which we're familiar with already on, on, on the uh, gun uh, trade, machine guns. You can, that you can regulate anything you tax. So they came up with the idea of a tax for drugs, and the understanding was that if you needed them, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> because you have to buy a tax stamp, and they wouldn't sell it to you. So that was prohibition by fiat, and nobody realized, the, the medical profession didn't know what had happened to them. He put one word, extra word in the clause. A doctor will be allowed to uh, uh, prescribe opium in the course of his professional practice only. And the only is why we are here today. Thank you very much.